Good morning, everyone. This is Bob Iacchino along with Mike Arnold from Path Trading Partners with an AM Path Chat for May 25th, covering the FX markets. A little bit of news overnight. Biggest news being OPEC. I normally wouldn't talk about it in the FX side of our Path Chats, but so far OPEC took the safe route. Saudi Arabian Number One Minister Khalid Al Falil said that the nine-month extension to oil production is a very safe and almost certain option. Now, this is the opening session. Crude oil is falling right now. It's down about a percent and a half when I last checked. That's because that's the expectation. That, uh, the expectation is that's all they're going to do. The same time frame cut that they've talked about and no addition to the production cuts. Now, Russia joins the meeting in a day or so to talk about what they're going to do, whether they're going to, they're going to participate in the cut or the, rather the extension of the cut, whether there's going to be any added extensions. It's unlikely that Russia adds barrels if OPEC doesn't to the level of cuts. Donald Trump continues the overseas tour, meets with U.S. NATO allies today in Brussels. Nothing should be market moving there. UK GDP showed the economy grew slower than originally estimated. This is the second reading of the first quarter. 0.2% expansion. Again, that is a, a revision. The report showed that the net trade was the biggest drag on the economy, with exports falling 1.6%. Bank of England had expected growth for the period to be revised higher, so it's a little bit disappointing. You'll see that on the Sterling chart when Mike brings that up. Markets are quiet in general. Right now, we're waiting on U.S. advanced good trades balance for April. It's really coming out nine minutes from when we're recording this, but we do not have it yet. We're also waiting for wholesale inventories and jobless claims and continuing claims. Jobless claims expected at 238 versus 232 last. Remember, the last two numbers came in lower than expected. So the revision, or rather the expectations, are starting to kind of tick down a little bit. That 238 is a lower expectation than we've seen lately. And we're looking for continuing claims to be at 1.925 million versus 1.898 million last. Expectations had been higher than that, and they're starting to tick down as the numbers come in. Continuing claims obviously came in lower the last couple of weeks as well. And then tonight at 6.30, which I'll mention again in the afternoon patch, that's Japanese Consumer Price Index year over year, and including energy, that comes out 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Nothing else really to speak of in the short-term news. We did an FX patch chat yesterday afternoon, covered a lot of stuff because we missed one yesterday morning, but we're back on the regular schedule. That's it. Let me turn it over to Mike to let you know what he's seeing on the charts. Mike, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Bob. Euro US dollar. So far, pretty much consolidating this week. We've had highs up around the 112.68, lows right around the 111.61. So those are the two. Really, the 111.60 to 112.60 area is key found some short-term resistance at our significant level. Remember, significant levels aren't a wall. They're an area that it, you can get pretty big reversal moves. So we poked up above it and reversed back below it. If it continues down, we are watching for the first level support at 111.87, followed by about that 111.60 area. We do have this rising eight coming in about 111.71, so that could also provide some, some support. On a move back up, a retest of today's highs right around 112.50 and then the 112.68. And if that is eventually broken, 112.97 on the upside. Over to the pound US dollar. Also consolidated in the last few days, caught really between the rising 21 bottom of our rotation zone and this declining upper trend line. On a continued decline, first level of support. 129.30, next level just below that 129.26, so the 26 to 30 level is gonna be key. If that is violated, then we'll be watching for a retest of our defining point at 128.88, and then below that 128.77. On a rally, resistance coming in 130.14, followed by about one, uh, 30, 33, and then possibly a retest of the defining point and the prior highs 
right around 130, 43 to 130, 47. Keep in mind, if we do get through that, we don't really have any major levels until 130, 132 on the upside. Switching to the US dollar, Japanese yen, also consolidating after that big move last week. Right now, trading just above our significant level, come, which comes in at 111.65. So if we turn and do head back down, 111.65 is going to be the first area of support, followed by the 111.47. Then we have very major support coming in about 111.33 to 111.28 right in here. If that is broken, you could see a pretty quick move down to 110.93 area. And then below that, we'll be watching for about the 110.75. On a move back up, facing some resistance right around this 111.80 area, then we'd be watching for 111.92 to 112.03. If we get through that, 112.30 is the next level higher that we'll be watching for right now. U.S. dollar, Swiss, came back down, didn't get quite down to the significant level, which comes in at 96.94. Today's low so far is coming at 97.00, so essentially the 97 mark. Rallied back up. Now, this is forming a potential double bottom that we will be watching for. It would need to close above the peak, which comes in at 97.76, so we'll be watching for that to happen, which then we could mark out the levels to retrace, but we're probably going to watch something coming in right around this prior breakdown zone. It is going against the rotation zone, so that means if this does trigger, it will be a slightly lower probability double. Until that happens, on a continued move up, we've retraced a fair amount today, we're going to be watching for resistance right around the 97.42, followed by the 97.55 area and then the 97.70 and then there will be some resistance right around this peak of the potential double bottom coming in at 97.76 on a move back lower support that 97 area then we have a lot of support the 96.94 to 96.91 area if that is broken 96.79 is next key level and then the next major Projected level lower is 96.40. Switching to the Aussie US dollar. Still has not been able to reach the full target for this trend line trade. Pulled back to the flat but upward, slightly upward sloping rotation zone. So far found some support at the rising 8.7460. So if it heads back down 7460 first level, then a lot of support coming in at 7454 to 7452. That is broken. It could kiss the trend line goodbye slightly lower, 7448. So this is a very key area. All that is broken, 7434. Move back up. What we'll be watching for is our significant level coming in at 7493, and then a possible retest of the 7507 area and then the 7517. If all those are broken, 7528 to 7531 is going to be very key and strong resistance. US dollar CAD reached down not quite to the trend line today and reversed back up. On a continued up move, 134, 48 to 50 area is going to be first level of resistance, followed by the 134, 81 area. Then above that, 135 to 135, 08 is going to be key. Turns back down, heads down lower. The 133, 83 area is going to be pretty strong support. We have a GAN level coming in and a rising trend line. If that is broken, you can see a little move down to 133.69, and if we fall through that, 133.43, and then 133.31. Finally, switching over to the U.S. dollar Mexican peso, which continued its downward move, hit our GAN projection level, which was 1834.93. So if it heads back down, watch for some support coming in there, and then slightly below that, today's low is 1833.98. If that is broken, the 1830.56 level 
and then we'd be watching for the 18, 24, 41 area on a move back up. 18, 45, 46 is going to be first resistance followed by the 18, 53, 88, and then the 18, 55, 97 area. And then we have the declining eight on a really strong rally up at 18, 59, 98. That's all we have for you. Back to you, Bob. Thank you for that, Michael. In the interim, while Mike was talking about the charts, a couple of U.S. numbers came out. Jobless claims, 234. We talked about the expectations starting to come down, and this was another beat. It's the third beat in a row. The expectation was 238. Last month's, I'm sorry, last week's 232,000 was revised up to 233. So it's only slightly up versus last week by 1,000. Uh, continuing claims, right around 1.1 million, uh, better than expected, but a little bit higher than last month. And the advanced trade goods uh, really jumped. It was expected at down 64.5 billion, in other words, trade deficit of 64.5 billion, and it came out at 67.6 billion. That's the second highest figure of 2017. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will talk to you in the next Path Chat. Please click like if you like what we're doing and think about subscribing. Cheers, everyone. <music>